We've spent a lot of time with Psalm 145. You had it read to you by Andy, and you have read two parts of it already this morning, and we will use the final part of it during communion. The interesting thing about this particular song is that it's acrostic. If you spoke Hebrew, does anybody here speak and read Hebrew? Just checking. So you're going to have to believe me. Oh wait, somebody's saying yes, you do. All right. So there's one person that can check my notes, so you're going to have to ask her later if I was telling the truth. An acrostic psalm is a psalm that begins with the first character in Hebrew, Aleph. And the very final pair of lines ends with the final character in the Hebrew alphabet, Tav. And every line between is a litany of praise for God, and it runs through the entire alphabet. Some of the commentators say that it's not as beautiful as some of the other psalms because it's a list. Lists aren't quite as pretty as as other forms of poetry or song. But of course, I myself find lists to be incredibly helpful. I've been making lists left and right as I moved up here um, with things to do. So prayer is a thing that we should be doing, we hope that we're doing every day of our lives. That our lives, in fact, are a living, breathing prayer. And so as we're talking about prayer this morning, I want to introduce you to the idea of Annie Lamott's help, thanks, and wow. Another question. Has anybody read any of Annie Lamott? Got at least a few Annie Lamott fans. All right. Help, thanks, wow is a really simple volume, and it just talks about three states of prayer that you might enter into. And every worship service really has all of those forms of prayer. We just shared them with each other. We talked about the things that were on our hearts that we're concerned about, and that is certainly a prayer of asking for help. We talked about the things that we were glad about, and that is a prayer of thanks. A prayer of wow is a prayer of praise. A moment in your life when things just become really clear and still and you just feel the electric presence of God somehow in your life. The psalmist gave us an alphabetical list of all the ways that the psalmist understood God to be amazing and merciful in his life. In fact, this particular psalm is attributed to David. So it was a king, the leader of a nation, who thought it was worth praying out loud and in great detail about the God that he was praising. The list becomes less boring when you realize that every single thing that God is being credited for is done because this is a God of creativity and justice and mercy. And so every single act, everything that happens in the Psalms is done out of hope for goodness for God's creation. And surely we are in need of that goodness today, in our time, just as the psalmist was thousands of years ago. I want to tell you a story very quickly, and it has three parts, help, thanks, and now in it. A couple of summers ago, when I was still in graduate school, because you guys know I'm new to this, right? Is that a surprise to anybody <laughs> that I'm new to this? If you didn't know, you know now. I'm confessing right up front. <laughs> so I was practicing on another congregation in New Hampshire a couple of summers ago. Their minister was off. She was on an Eli Lilly grant studying Buddhist majority countries all over the world. And we were studying Thich Nhat Hanh and Christ side by side, reading parables and listening to the wisdom of a Buddhist teacher as well, and understanding the ways that in a pluralistic, complicated world, our faiths connect and can speak to each other. 
and what we have to say to each other. So that was my great purpose when I was up in New Hampshire, but then I had the practical issue of having to drive back down to Massachusetts to be with my family part of the week and to go to classes. So one Monday morning, I got in my car, very, very early, 5.30, and I set out, and about two miles down the road, I started hearing this terrible flapping sound. Flap, 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 sound like rubber. That doesn't sound good. But there was no, there was no um, light, warning light on my driver's, the dashboard. There was nothing visibly wrong. I pulled over at the police station hoping there would be a policeman on duty, but they were out and about, so there was nobody to help me look at my tire. So I decided, what am I going to do? I can either drive straight down to Cambridge for classes, or I can try getting home to Ipswich in case I need to have my car looked at. So I decided I would head for Ipswich, but I decided I would go a little bit slow on the highway, and I would stay really close to the exits, and I would stay in the right lane just in case anything happened, and sure enough, I got on the highway, and when I was very close to an exit ramp, my tire blew. Uh -huh. Not blew like, you know, out of control, but you know, really flat, not good. So I'm driving pretty much on the rim. So I, I pulled off at a garage and pulled out, checked to see if I had a spare, and then I called AAA because I always have my handy AAA card. So as you can tell, this part of the prayer is the, I'm saying prayers for safety to get off the highway and get to a safe place to just pull over, and there was a garage right there, so I was safe. But I was definitely in need of help. And I thought AAA was going to be the answer to my help. And then two young men, maybe 17 or 18, come running across the parking lot of the garage. And they're in jeans, but they have nice shirts on. And they run over, and I say, oh, I'm, I'm on the phone with AAA. They'll be here. And they're like, no, no. If it was my mom here, she would want me to help you. I'm like, OK, they think I'm old enough to be their mom, which is probably <laughs> true. <laughs> so. Okay, they, they, they jacked up the car for me and they started changing the tire and lo and behold, help was right there next to me in this fabulous pair of young men who were getting down on the ground and taking off the tire that was blown and putting on the spare tire that was still kind of dirty and messy. And one of these boys, in fact the boy that was doing most of the work, was in a white starched button-down shirt and he and he was down on his knees in the parking lot of a gas station right you know it's not clean there's nothing clean about what's happening here he's busy twirling the the jack and, and getting everything put on and and i really was getting worried about him so i was being a little bit mom like myself and i asked him um, I offered him a different shirt because I didn't want him to mess up his shirt. And I can tell you that in that moment, I went from help <coughs> to thanks. Because my prayer was answered and I got a, a thanks moment. I had a chance to say, thank you that these, these young men showed up. And then two more of their friends came and they were all, they were giving each other instructions on how to do this, but there's still one young man really doing most of the work. And it sounds like a pretty simple story, but I'm going to save the wow moment for the end of our conversation because I want you to remember the young man in the white starched button-down shirt who's down on his knees helping me because his mom would want him to and he would want somebody to help his mom if she were the one by the side of the road. Just, just remember him. And now you get to try being part of the writing of a song. We're going to write a song together this morning. In the song, we are the people who do all the speaking. And God does all of the action. But prayer isn't just a passive 
conversation. Prayer is something that we can do when we are walking, when we are singing, when we are voting, when we are visiting somebody who is ill, when we are making our dinner and appreciating it. There are so many ways and places and times when we can pray. And we know, we know from the children's sermon, from the basket of prayers that my family received, that we are all praying all the time, all over the world. So let's us be part of the prayer, and let's us be part of the active part of the prayer. We have an English alphabet with 26 letters in it. So now we're going to count off row by row and see if we can do this. You know me and math. I tried this last time, but we're going to try it again. Um, if you're row one, you would be A. Y, Z. Oh, X is tough, but you guys can do it. I'll do the Y and the Z, unless anybody else wants a Y or Z. Anybody want to do Y or Z? <coughs> All right, so I need at least one helper to help me pass out prayer leaves and markers. Actually, three helpers on each row. Will you pass out markers on your side? Here, will you pass out markers? Um, no, one for each person. They have a choice of pen or marker, and then people can just pick out a leaf. And I need two helpers over on this side. Any helpers over on this side? Oh look, I've got a Bob and I've got a Jeanette. All right. Much like the psalmist who used the alphabet as an inspiration to write a prayer, I'm going to invite you, using the alphabet that you were assigned, A, B, C, right? Does everybody remember their alphabet or do I need to walk around here? Okay. I would invite you to write on one side of your leaf one word, one action word that is your prayer request or your prayer hope, a verb that you would call out that's in your letter of the alphabet. And then on the back, <coughs> something that you would pray for. So an action word would be, I hope, right? Hope. And on the back would be the, what, what do you hope for? I hope for peace. I hope for ice cream after lunch. Whatever you might hope for, right? Something silly or something serious. Whatever you feel moved to pray for. Each person writes one verb and one thing that you pray for. And we're going to give you a couple of minutes to do this. Do you have any questions? Yeah, it starts with the letter. The back doesn't have to start with the letter. Let's just say the verb needs to start with the letter, but the back can be loose and whatever you hope for. The back can be a phrase. It doesn't have to be just one word. The back can be a phrase. You might hope for ice cream after lunch on Sunday. And when you're done, why don't you hold up your leaf? So we have an idea when our community is ready to share its prayers. our leaves are up. A few people are still working on their leaves. Alright. So what I'm going to invite is that you would now come forward with your leaves. We can start on the side and you can hang them on any of these trees that are lit up in case you can get the connection between the trees and the leaves. So I would invite you to come forward, and if you want to say your word out loud, just your verb word, that would be great. Um, alleviate. Alleviate. Wow, that's a great one. Please hang it up. 
and come on forward, don't be shy. Breathe, bring balance, blessings, and then. Blessings and grief for balance. Come on forward. Anybody can come forward. Working. Working. We have a couple. Z. Zero. We have P for peace. P. Let's make peace. And we want to pass. And for nourish. Nourish. And for nourish. Say your words out loud if you will while you're hanging them up. I'd love to hear them. And for need. All you need is love. Need. Mary. the judge. The young man who was changing my tire was on his way to court. And he was in his good shirt, button down shirt, and he was supposed to appear in front of a judge and he had stopped to change my tire. So I quick gave him a t-shirt and told him not to mess up his shirt. He finished changing my tire and then he went on his way to appear in front of a judge. I don't know what choices he had made that brought him to that moment. 
He was moving forward to a moment of mercy and redemption in front of the legal system. I wrote him a note and I said, please excuse this young man if he is late because he helped a minister on the side of the road with a flat tire, mm -hmm. and I hoped that it would be enough to get him some extra grace in front of the judge. But let me tell you, in, in a time when we are thinking about our saints and our veterans, on a weekend that precedes Veterans Day, when we mourn those who we have lost and we celebrate those who are living saints in our lives, let us look around us for the unexpected saint, and the moment of wow, 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 you wrote a song. Come up and take some time with it later on and find out what words are important in your lives.